In this lesson, we'll be looking at how to solve proportions with an x or an unknown number in them, and how to set up a story problem to be a proportion that we can solve. So, looking at solving proportions, when we talk about proportions, we're talking about two equal fractions. And typically that means we're solving something that's unknown in one of the fractions. Now there are a number of different ways to solve proportions and there's different ways to explain how, how to do this algebraically. And you can take a look at that on the Khan Academy video that's linked with the, linked on the class. But what we're going to look at is just the basic procedure for how to solve for x with a proportion. So when we do all our algebra work, what essentially happens is with two equal fractions, we can do, it's often called cross multiplying, but what we do, what we're gonna do is multiply the diagonals and each diagonal will set equal to the other. So here, that would mean we'd multiply 20 and x, which would become 20x, and then we're also gonna multiply five times eight, which is five times eight, well, we'll write it like this. So then we get 20x equals 40. From there, we have an equation that's usually fairly simple to solve. We can do our equation solving. 20 times x, we divide by 20. 20 divided by 20 is x. 40 divided by 20 is 2. Our answer is 2. We can check our answer by going back and looking. If we plug x in, 2 fifths equals 8 twentieths. Is that true? Well, if we think about simplifying 8 twentieths, we can divide 8 by 4 and we get 2. And we divide 20 by 4 and we get 5. So they are equal fractions. That means x does equal 2. So let's look at that with a couple more examples here. So for each of these, we always want to think we're going to multiply diagonally. Something to remember is, don't get this confused with multiplying fractions. Remember that multiplying fractions, we multiply straight across, but this is not multiplying fractions. We have an equals between them. When we have an equal sign between two fractions, this is where we multiply the diagonals. Here we do x times 5 is 5x, and we'll do 7 times 3 is 21. So we have 5x equals 21. We'll put our bar down the middle, and we can divide by 5 on both sides. Divide by 5 gets us x equals 21 fifths. We can reduce that or divide it on the calculator to get the decimal 4.2, but we can also just leave it as 21 fifths. So our answer there for this fraction is 21 fifths. Possibly if we want to check our answer by putting it in a calculator, we would want to reduce it to the decimal rather than having a, a fraction and a fraction. So then it would be x equals 4.2. And one more example. Here we notice the x is in the denominator. That's okay. We still do the same thing. We have equal fractions. So we can multiply the diagonal, 5 times x equals 2 times 3, so 6. And again, this one is divided by 5, so we get x equals 6 fifths, or 1.2 as our answer. And we can always check, if we look here, here, the 5 thirds, the number on the denominator was smaller, if we did 2 over 1.2, again, the denominator is smaller. So our answer is reasonable. And we can always check by just dividing each of these fractions on the calculator. So this is what we do when it's simply just one of the numbers is missing. It's x or y, z, a, whatever variable it is. We can multiply the, the diagonals, set them equal, and solve for x. What happens if we have more than just x in our fraction? 
Here we have x plus 2 over 5 equals 9 sixteenths. Well, we still have equal fraction. One fraction is equal to the other fraction with nothing else. So we can still do the same thing. We can multiply our diagonals. The only difference is we're going to have a little bit more to do. Here we're doing 16 times x plus 2. So what we have to do is write it as 16 times, parentheses, x plus 2 equals 9 times 5, we have 45. So if we do that, then remember, we need to use the distributive property. So 16 times x, 16 times 2, we get 16x plus 32 equals 45. And then, then now we have an equation that, like normal, we can solve for x. Subtract 32. 45 minus 32 is 13, and we have that equals 0 plus 16x. Here we'll divide by 16, divide by 16, we get x equals 13 sixteenths. And again, we can leave it like that or put it as a decimal, but this would be our answer. So for one like this, Remember, it's the same idea. If two fractions are equal, multiply the diagonals. Just remember, if there's more than one thing with x, you have to, if it's addition, use the distributive property. So put the, the addition or subtraction in parentheses, and then distribute the other number into those parentheses. Last, we're going to look, uh, as said earlier, at a word problem. And once it's set up, it's fairly easy like the others, but the key is setting it up. This says, at every, out of every five students surveyed, two listen to country music. And then it asks, at that rate, how many students in a school of 600 students listen to country music? So we know we're setting up a proportion, and we're told, out of every five students, two listen to country music. So we can say, 2 out of 5 listen to country music. We get that 2 listen out of every 5 surveyed. Then it's asking us how many students out of 600 students listen to country music. Well, 600 students is our total. And remember, 5 was our total number, 2 out of every 5. So we're going to put the 600 also at the bottom. And we want to know how many listen to country music. The top, the 2, had to do with country music, so in our other fraction, the top will be x, because we don't know it. Now we have a proportion, 2 fifths equals x over 600. So we take our fraction that's equal, cross multiply, 5 times x is 5x, equals uh, 600 times 2 is 1,200. And we have the same thing here. We can divide each of these by 5. So we get 5x divided by 5 is 5. And then here we have 1,200 divided by 5. Well, uh, we would need a calculator for that. Or we can do it in our heads too, but I'm going to use a calculator quick. So 1,200 divided by 5, we get 240. And remember, this is a word problem. So it asks, how many students in a school listen to country music? 200 Out of 600 students, 240 students listen to country music. So, uh, for all equal fraction, equal proportions, think about multiplying the diagonals or cross-multiplying and then solving the equation. Uh, so you can move on to the practice assignment to practice proportions, and then once you complete that, then you can move on to the assessment.